TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. Good evening, I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to Issues in Faith. Well, as the Archbishop wrote in his Advent address to every um, parishioner here in the Archdiocese of New Orleans, the year of family and faith, which was originally um, set for 2013, he's extended um, for many reasons, but one of which is Pope Francis has called for the Synod on the Family in 2014. So we're going to continue our focus on the family throughout 2014 and look at the ways um, our local church is working to support families here in, in the New Orleans area in many different ways. One of the great things, uh, looking back at 2013, Year of the Family, I love when uh, the, the Archbishop called for, for families to stay, you know, stay home in a sense, or to stay, go to church and focus on family and focus on the faith um, and not be so busy with all these other things, school uh, projects or sport, sporting events and things mm -hmm. like that, to really stay home on Sundays and, 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 and go to church on Sundays and, and be together as a family and enjoy, um, you know, not necessarily at home, but like go go as a family, wherever you're gonna go, stay as a family. Right, and, and using Sunday for what God called us to, um, to use it for in the Ten Commandments, originally with the Jewish Sabbath, and, and then moved to Sunday with our Christian tradition, um, to use it as a day of rest, yeah. a day of family togetherness, um, a day to not only grow your, your family, your, your, your domestic church, but also to become part of your parish and, and help your parish family to grow yeah. um, as well. But many people forget that, you know, especially here in the Archdiocese of New Orleans, we are so blessed to have so many parishes and to um, really be able to pick and choose which mass we go to on Sunday depending upon what time and location is most convenient for us. We, we take that for granted. In some parts of the country, in most parts, many parts of the country, that is not a luxury that Catholics have. We're very blessed with that. But to really call us home to our parishes, um, to become rooted in our parishes, to grow in faith and ministry there, um, and to bring that home into our families is a really important part of, of growing in our family and growing in our faith. You know, I think it's so important because we get so busy. We've, we've busied ourselves so much. We've, and we've connected ourselves to so many different things and to kind of unplug and to, to get reconnected, to, re, uh, to strengthen those roots, uh, the, the, uh, that family um, unit, uh, the, the mom and the dad and the children, and establish that friendship and that bond and that, that family. Um, that's, that's, that's to me is so essential and so key uh, if we can re claim that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then I think the church will just continue to grow in a new way. That's right. And so last week we talked about um, being able to have that, that New Year's resolution every time we go to confession, That's that right. New Year's feeling every time we receive the sacrament of reconciliation. And so today we're going to encourage people to add growing in that, in that faith and family to their list of New Year's resolutions. It's not too late to start them. Amen. That sounds fantastic. Well, many people are familiar with the March for Life that takes place in the frigid Washington, D.C. annually to protest abortion and to take a stand for life. And while over 500 people from the New Orleans area will be traveling to D.C. this year, if you aren't one of them, you still have the opportunity to make that stand with government leaders right here in Louisiana. Tonight, representatives from Louisiana Right to Life join us to talk more about the Louisiana Life March. And welcome to Issues in Faith again, uh, Cody. Good to have you back on, and, and also to Casey. Um, tell us about, uh, again, the mission that y'all serve uh, for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Sure. Louisiana Right to Life was founded in 1973 with the Roe v. Wade decision, and our organization works through service, activism, education, and legislation to bring about an end to abortion and other threats to life in our state. So what are some of the big programs that y'all do in the state of Louisiana, not just for the Archdiocese of New Orleans? Sure. We have an Advertise for Life program that reaches women in crisis pregnancies. We do a lot of legislation at the Capitol during the sessions. We've passed great legislation. We're the number one pro-life state in the oh, country. That's amazing. Something Praise we're God really proud of, but we know we have a far way to go. Sure, sure, sure. We have a lot of youth programs that Cody can share yeah. about. Yeah, go yeah. Um, We have a lot of awesome youth programs. One of them is Camp Joshua. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the whole Camp Joshua initiative. It comes in three parts. Uh, there's uh, Camp Joshua Crash Course, which is like a, a one-day just 
packed, jam packed session of pro life ness. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we had the Camp Joshua weekend, uh, which you've been on before. Yeah, it's a beauty. Um, I love it. We bring in students from all over the state to uh, different areas of the state and just teach them the aspects of being pro-life and how to be articulately and effectively pro-life. Yeah, one of the things I think that we're bombarded with a lot of uh, the culture of death messages, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that at, at teenagers, uh, I think in high school, I think I've heard studies where they're pro-life in high school, but then something happens, they transition, right. they get to college, and their views change. Right. And I think that the attacks increase once they get out of high school and out of the home, and then they're into the, mm -hmm. the secular world, and there's a lot of right. attacks that, um, that question whether or not what we believe is true. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you've seen? How do you kind of rack that? Well, one of the statistics that I've read, I'm not sure exactly how true it is, <laughs> but uh, they say that 70% of students that inner college pro-life uh -huh. leave pro-choice. Oh, wow, wow. Um, and that's what our, our whole initiative of the Camp Joshua is about, is to give these students solid ground to stand yeah. on whenever they enter to college. Because whenever you go to college, you have uh, your teachers, you have your peers, you have uh, just your family members. Everyone is, yeah. is just, they're gonna bombard you with this culture yeah. of death because this is this is the way our culture has taken. And you're trying to fit in, you're being overwhelmed with this message, right. then you, it's, it's like those little subtle steps, a slippery slope, then you're like, right. well, maybe it's not that big right. of a deal. And, and then next thing you know, you're standing there, well, well everybody should have a right to choose. And right. you forget the message, which is it's life, and we're there to protect it. And sometimes cho choices are there, but they have to be made for the right and the truth. Right. So, um, so tell us what's going on now, big month of January. January is a busy month for us. We have our Louisiana Life March in Baton Rouge that rallies the people of Louisiana to stand for an abortion-free state. And this year, our focus is on adoption as a real solution to abortion. And we have some great speakers. Senator Vitter will be with us and Congressman Cassidy. We also have Sarah Jones Zagorski, who is a staff member with us, sharing her story of being in foster care and being adopted and what that did for her. So we're really I excited about it. that's a big message though when you talk about these debates and like, well truth is, is that mm -hmm. it, at conception, uh, it's a human person, the 23 chromosomes from the woman and the 23 chromosomes right. from the male come together with the 46 of the zygote, that's a human being and, and all that. But we can tell the story though of people who have been adopted, who have survived abortion because that their parents chose life even though that they were on the brink of maybe choosing abortion, mm -hmm. that they chose right. adoption instead. And hearing those stories I think can really change the hearts of, of others, so that's, that's amazing. There was a powerful story this past fall of Auburn's homecoming queen. Came yes. out and spoke publicly that her mom had conceived her in rape, which is something mm. we hear about often People as like, a okay, huge that's, argument that, yeah. for abortion. Right. Um, but she was so grateful that yeah. she was adopted. So adoption really can there save lives. There are a lot of stories like that where right. people who, in those situations of rape, the the mother chose uh, love, uh, to the the life, and bring life yes. the life about, and uh, that healing process too. But but also to the child who is separate from the rape, who didn't do anything right. wrong, shouldn't be you know, kill because Definitely. of that action. So, um, so tell us, so this is separate from the March for Life that's going on in Washington, D.C., correct? Right. And then there's something going on also in Baton Rouge, but in Lafayette as well, is it Shreveport? Shreveport, Shreveport. Yeah. Uh, this year for the first time we have a Life March in Shreveport yeah. on January 25th. We're really working to expand our mission across the state. And Shreveport's the abortion capital of Louisiana. Really? So this is very crucial for the city to really be aware of the problem the, you know, the city is such a Christian city, so we really think that we can make a difference yeah. through this event. And Cody, with your responsibility with Camp Joshua, with the youth and stuff like that, how, how do you see things going? I, I mean, I just see things going uh, through education. Mm -hmm. um, just as, a, as the more we educate people, yeah. the better people will understand the issues. Um, and I think one of the biggest issues is that we, we devalue human life. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that we're allowed to do that is that we devalue others, right? Mm -hmm. um, not just the unborn and not just, um, say, the, the elderly, sure. but we devalue people in school by bullying them. Yeah. We look at their grades, we look at how they look, the, yeah. how they dress. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with is that we devalue ourselves. Yeah. So I think a lot of what we need to do is call our culture to an understanding of their own value. Mm -hmm. um, like showing people like, hey, you're valuable, yeah. like you have value yourself. So you can't really, like, and that, this will lead us to no longer devalue others. I think a lot of this happens too when people act out of hurt mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fear. 
um, that those are some you know, definite um, obstacles that cause people to hurt others in such a way. And then I feel like that's the Christian message that we're not just talking about life, but ultimately we're also trying to bring the gospel to the right. to people and help them to understand that Jesus Christ, no matter what the situation is, He's there to help us and give us the life uh, and the confidence that whatever challenge we might be facing at that point, He can give us a way out. So Definitely. tell us some more what's going on uh, with the Right for Life. We have a huge youth event in Washington, yeah. D.C. called Go Forth mm -hmm. that we gather now 1,200 students, which is wow. amazing. We started with 1,300. 1,300. 1,300 this year. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. It started That's a awesome. few years ago with 600, and there's just been such an influx of youth going to the march yeah. from Louisiana. So it's a huge testament, yeah. I think, that the youth really are the pro-life generation that yeah. will really make a difference. So tell uh, our viewers um, a way to get in touch with maybe y'all or trying to find out more information about the different marches, either Baton Rouge or uh, Shreveport, right, and then the one for uh, Washington, D.C. Our website is prolifelouisiana.org, mm -hmm. and it's a hub for everything we do. All of the events coming up are right on the home page, and you can find out more there. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank y'all so much for being with us. Thank I know definitely. there's a lot going on, and I know y'all are really busy, especially here in January. So yeah. thank you so much Thanks for your for time. Thank us. you for all that y'all are doing, and God bless you in your ministry and your work. Thank you. guys, you. too. Again, uh, you can learn more about the Louisiana Life March online at www.prolifelouisiana.org and clicking on Louisiana Life March. And we'll be back with more Issues in Faith. We're local and enlightening. WLAE. New Orleans Public Television. For those of us who are parents, one of the first truly important decisions we make for our children is giving them a name. And in the past few years, names have ranged from the traditional and classic to the downright bizarre. Joining us tonight to talk more about the recent trend in naming your child is Lucy Wisco, editor of Baby Ballot at babynames.net. Thanks so much, Lucy, for being with us. Thank you, Sarah, for having me on the show. Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about um, Baby Ballot and babynames.net. Okay, so Belly Ballad is a baby naming social media website, and our website address is babynames.net. And apart from lots and lots of information on names and their origins and meaning and popularity and pronunciation, our main goal was to make baby naming more fun. So the way it works is that um, any soon-to-be mom or any soon-to-be parent, for that matter, can go to our website. They can sign up. They can create their ballot and choose the potential names they like for their soon-to-be born child. And after that, they can invite their friends and family or even the general public, if that's what they want, to vote on these names through Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And once the voting is done, they have the winner, and hopefully that will help them to make the final decision. That's, that is a really fun way to involve your family in naming. I know um, those of us here involved with Issues in Faith, Jason has five children. I'm expecting my third, so baby naming is, is quite a popular activity um, around here. And for us, it was really important, for, for my husband and I, it was really important that we chose names that first had an importance to us, but that also sounded, we were, we were big fans of, of classical traditional names. Um, my son is Nathan, my daughter is Eloise. Um, so as we go for the third, um, do you find that parents are look for names when they get to their multiple children that sort of flow together or match? Is that something that people can talk about on, on the site as well? Um, they do comment on their choices, but everyone's different and people have lots of different um, personal motivations. Um, as you said, some people just want the name to sound good. Some people consider whether the name goes well with the last name. Some are particularly interested in what the name means in the original language mm. or um, they want to choose a name that has been running in the family history. Sometimes they just want to be unique and original and they want to invent. So um, it is tricky because sometimes, yeah, you do also get a lot of um, opinions from, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your husband, your sister, and it's 
it's hard because there's a lot of pressure when you're trying to choose a name. Oh, definitely. And one of the things that um, you guys are predicting on your site for this year is that there's a, a return to some of the less, um, not that people are not going to continue to be creative with their names, but there's a return to using biblical names. Um, it's becoming more popular to go back to the Bible, um, old, both Old and New Testament, to um, select names. So what are you seeing that is making you predict that for a trend for 2014? Yes, so the huge advantage that we have through our website is that we can collect all this real-time data. Um, we have thousands of people signing up every month and we can see which trends and which names are sort of dying out and how, how some other ones are gaining popularity. Mm -hmm. So what we've been seeing a lot in the past few months, and we're pretty positive that will take off in the year 2014, is that biblical names are surging. And technically, biblical names are really nothing new under the sun here. They repeatedly appear on the Social Security Administration's list of 10 most popular names in the U.S. Names like Jacob, Noah, Michael, Abigail, they have been around for a while. Um, what we see now, though, is that parents are drawn to others previously less frequent biblical names, such as Caleb, Luke, Levi, Judith, Naomi, Shiloh, Isaiah, and so on and so forth. Um, I think that uh, the reason for this is that for the last few years, we have really seen a lot of experimenting mm -hmm. and parents inventing names using bizarre spellings. And at some point, they just want to go back to the original values and traditions because there's comfort and peace in them. And we all know that America has been through some tough times lately, and I'm sure many people were asking themselves why this all was happening, what the meaning and all that was. Some of them were maybe even questioning their faith. Mm -hmm. So um, now the times are settling again. We're getting out of the woods. So for many people, going back to biblical names is a way of honoring God and faith because, you know, they help them to get through tough times. Well, then it's so true. You, you know, anyone um, can pick up a, a Bible. Um, a person of almost any faith could pick up a Bible and find a story of hope or inspiration and, and a, a God speaking to you through that. Um, and so those names do begin to um, have a meaning. You know, my son, I mentioned his name is Nathan, who's a prophet from the Old Testament, and his middle name is Joseph, or St. Joseph, the, the foster father of Jesus. And so, um, you know, we, were, we picked two very biblical names for him, and so that was very important um, to us, and we'll, we'll probably continue that trend. But also, it's kind of, um, to, to build a little bit on what you were saying, um, it, it's kind of nice to see because when you have an, a new child, when you have a new baby, it's such a blessing and it really is um, hope for the future. You know, you, the imagery is uh, Rafiki holding up Simba <laughs> in the beginning of The Lion King, that new hope for the future and leadership. But with each new life, um, God has blessed you with, with really hope for the future and, and honoring him through names is, is a great way to do that. Absolutely, Sarah, that is so true. and I. Um, thing that also um, selecting the new Pope Francis played an important part. Pope Francis is now focusing more on the need for humility, mercy, and compassion, and thus bringing ordinary people much closer to the church again. So it seems, again, that the return to biblical names in many cases is to honor the new leader and the new, and in my opinion, much kinder path the church is taking towards their devotees. Well, no, it's true that the Francis effect, is, as people are starting to call it, that is calling people um, back to church, back to their faith, back to asking questions and entering into dialogue um, is definitely a positive step um, for, the, for the world, really. But especially here in, in the United States, we're seeing um, people returning to mass. And um, again, that, that openness that you mentioned, that openness for people to ask questions and have that very respectful dialogue. Um, 
encouraged by Pope Francis at the very top of the leadership of the church. So, Lucy, I want to thank you so much um, for being with us tonight and for sharing um, this this really interesting trend. Like I said, this is something that is very important to me. My, my third baby is, is due June the 1st, and so my husband and I will be um, very soon contemplating very, <laughs> very hard names for, for him or her, and so um, we're very excited about that. And I'm, I'm very excited to hear about this trend coming back in um, to our culture. So thanks for sharing, sharing it with us. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Sarah. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun choosing the name, and God bless that beautiful little baby that's coming pretty oh, soon here. Thank you so much, Lucy. Well, you can read more about the latest trends in baby names and see the list of 2013's most popular names for children online at babynames.net. And as we look ahead to 2014, we're pleased to announce that Catholic Charities Archdiocese of New Orleans is over 76% of the way towards its Archbishop Hannon Community Appeal Goal. Learn more about how to get involved in the appeal at www.ccano.org. And we'll be right back. We're local and enlightening. WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. They push back the bleachers at Mount Carmel's gym to make way for a different kind of competition. This special event called Enticed by Art caught the eye of some local celebrity judges. Janet Gross takes us to the show. There's a lot of cool stuff inside the heads and hearts of the artists at Mount Carmel. Some 100 students here have something on display in this one night only art gallery. The idea was to do a flower, but to zoom in so you couldn't really tell what you were doing. So that's why I chose the title, Perception is Everything. It's an iris, by the way. Most of the time it's classwork, 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 um, and then they come to art and that's kind of a, an escape, you know, from the regular rigorous academic stuff. Um, but they work so hard in our art classes. We really push them and so we, you know, this is an opportunity for them to get to show off what, what they're doing throughout the school year, in our classes anyway. So it's a good, like, relief to just like come and just like paint and be creative and um, but it's still kind of challenging it's just like a different type of challenge so that's what I really like about it. Most of the artists behind these creations may not make it a career but the creativity and knowledge that they can do it will stay with them forever. We want art to speak to the girls about God. We believe that art reaches a person's soul and what in them brings out the creator who lives in them all the time. Do you have a favorite piece? Well, I have seen Maddie Hannon's portrait of her father. It's uh, my dad's portrait, and actually I was inspired by it because he's a photographer, so I kind of just put a bunch of pictures together and just kind of was like, oh, I'm just going to go with it, go with it, because that's what my teacher always says, just do it, just go with your heart, just go with what it's saying. I was, I'm stunned. I mean, it's beautiful. She's been hiding it from me for the longest of time, though. You wouldn't believe it. She's been, yeah, I know, because it brings tears to my eyes. It's a, it's a lifetime, you know. There's a lot of art appreciation going on in this room full of friends and family, and even a celebrity judge or two. It's hard to make a decision, but you have to. Especially hard because each judge was wearing some of the art, a hand-painted tie, a tradition and a gift from the students. We have students that are chosen and paired up with either a teacher or a, or a celebrity from our community. They research the person and they create original artwork based on this person like a biography. It's amazing how ta much talent they have in this room, like it's crazy. And I, and I, and we, I deal with artists all the time, but it's really cool to see youth artists doing their thing. This gives the artist the chance to have that gallery moment, some recognition, appreciation. No, I love her eyelashes. It's Marina and the Diamonds. Y'all know that? No. It's, a, it's, a, it's Marina and the Diamonds. I don't know what that They're is. called baby doll eyelashes. It's a pretty good feeling realizing what they love to do, people love to see. These are all going to be in my background soon. I'm Janet Gross for Issues and Faith. 
The special design ties have become a tradition at Mount Carmel. Students have been painting and awarding them for more than two decades. If you have a question for us or have an idea for a story you'd like to see on air, please write to us at Issues in Faith, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Suite 345, Metairie, Louisiana, 70002, or email us at questions at wlae.com. Plus, if you miss an episode, you can catch up online at www.archdiocese-no.org. And that's our program for this evening. For all of us at Issues in Faith, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Hope you join us again soon. Until then, God bless.